Hello everyone, welcome to The Great Mead Project Part 2! There's a whole new group of us this year. You can see them all on the screen right now as we speak. All their videos will be linked in the description below, at least, you know, as they come out. But like I did last year, I will also be making a playlist for this year. We had all of you vote uh, on the website greatmeadproject.com on the top three ingredients that we'll be using. Everyone came to the table with their own ingredients. And um, we have a vanilla rose lavender mead. A lot of people wanted floral mead, I guess. And two of the ingredients, my, my only two ingredients, because each of us brought two, are both vanilla and rose. So I thought those Pretty funny, I'm, I'm a bit tickled, you know, that out of all of us, both of my ingredients <laughs> were chosen. So here's what we're gonna do. All right, as you can see, I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Literally nothing. I took out some stuff that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be using orange blossom honey because I feel like the orange will help bring a nice fruity sweet note to uh, bust through all that floralness. I'm going to make a lavender tea on the stove top. Oh boy, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do two pounds of honey in this. Set my scale and I'm just gonna start scooping. Two pounds. So the yeast that I'm using today is gonna be K1V1116. I just wanna try it out. I have this, it's called Opti White. And I picked this up on, I think it's called More Wine. But what this does is during fermentation is when you add it, it adds mouthfeel to your wine. All right, so I have my scale. For my Opti White, we need 1.9 grams. I'm going to get my honey in here. When I worked with lavender before, it was way too strong. If I put 0.25, then that's a quarter of an ounce. And I will just do that. Okay. Got my Opti White, 1.25 grams. I literally never measure my Go Firm, and I don't know why. Looks to be about right to me. All right, this is a pretty good temperature. It is above 90. I'm gonna put about half of this packet in. So you wanna follow the instructions on the back of the packet just for like the best outcomes for your yeast. Like that's what you want. I can smell the lavender. So once the yeast start foaming up and they're looking happy, you do wanna give them like some sugar, you know? You wanna give them a little bit of something to eat. Another important step here is to aerate your mead. I don't have any cool tools like some of the other people do who are a part of this project. So I just pick mine up and I shake it. Time to take our initial gravity reading. We're at 1.07, 1.074. Now I am going to be using Tosna for this. And uh, yeah, I will see you when we're at step two. Don't know if I wanna add more water. This line right here, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's been about a month since, um, since we last saw this mead. Just as sort of an overview, I filmed a little bit with my phone and this mead did finish at 0 0.0998 and I did stabilize this mead. So really I've just been waiting to <laughs> do this next part before I racked off of the lease uh, into a new carboy. I'm gonna be adding rose hips. And I've never worked with rose hips before. These are dried. I'm just sort of like winging this more or less because I did try to look online to see like how much people would add, but it wasn't usually dried. It was like fresh and I don't know, I didn't really find what I was looking for necessarily. So I'm gonna take a quarter cup. Hmm. Oh, it's got like twigs and stuff in it. I've got a milk bag, like a nut milk bag. It's got a hole in it. As you can see, I've been using these 
I'm just gonna try to like tie this so that uh, the rose hips don't fall out of the hole, you know what I mean? About a quarter cup. Here we go, winging it. So that's what we do around here sometimes. And I also need my vanilla bean. Now for the vanilla bean, I'm just gonna take a whole bean and split it and stick it in there. I like to go for full extraction, which is about two months. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go ahead and rack. And here we are. So far this mead is very, very pretty. It's so clear, but you know, obviously it won't be clear forever. This is a lot of headspace, obviously. Uh, so hopefully this doesn't really have to live in here for very long. Like if the rose hips extracts really quickly, then I'll probably move this over to a bottleneck carboy and just take the vanilla bean over with it. Okay, I'm just gonna put one of these little flat things on here. I think that's okay. All right, uh, so we'll see y'all here in a second when I remove things. I don't know, we'll see how this mead is. <laughs> Hello everyone. You might be a little bit confused right now. <laughs> this is the tasting of this mead and also a full update on, a, on what happened here, okay? I made a huge mistake, huge. And it's just like, it's so embarrassing to even talk about that I don't, I don't want to, but I made a really big mistake and my mead got completely oxidized. I didn't use a, uh, an airlock correctly. I had to go to Texas and um, bugs and air and all the things got into my mead and completely destroyed it. I basically did everything the same as I did round one, but I'm just gonna kinda like go over that with you here real quick before I taste this mead. So I made a lavender tea and I steeped it for three minutes with 0.18 ounces of lavender. So I think I cut down the lavender a little bit. I cut it like kinda in half. Um, because I do think that it was a little strong the first time around. I added the Opti White Go Firm and Firm Aid O for the whole feeding process. Once it hit one, I stabilized and I added a quarter teaspoon of tannin. Allowed that to sit. Later on, I added about a half a cup of rose hips and a teaspoon of vanilla, homemade vanilla. Uh, but I don't think it was very strong because I had to add more vanilla. The reason I went with vanilla extract instead of vanilla bean is A, I didn't have time because I'd started this so late. I didn't have time. B, I have been told by other meat makers that extract is like the way to go. It's less, uh, not like waste, but you know, so if using an entire vanilla bean, it's, it's extract. Almost two weeks later, tested the gravity again, just in case it was at 1.004, so those Rose hips did add a little bit of sweetness, just a touch. I also just wanted to make sure this didn't re-ferment at all, that I had stabilized correctly. When I tasted it, of course it tasted super young because it is super young, <laughs> um, but I didn't, I didn't get a whole lot of rose. I'm not really sure what rose hips are supposed to taste like in a mead. So I added a teaspoon of rose water, a little over a half a teaspoon of vanilla. So now we're at a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. I decided to add rum barrel chips because why not? This needed something else going on in it. You know what I'm saying? 0.385 ounces of rum barrel chips and half a cup, AKA about six ounces of orange blossom honey. I do add more honey. I just, you know, I write down all the steps, okay? Had a gravity of 1.014, didn't feel like that was quite enough. So I added another quarter cup of honey and brought it up to 1.024. And then I remember when I tasted it, I was like, this is too sweet. I hope not. That is where we are. And that was about a month ago. This has been sitting, it is not clear. Ooh, that's a fuzzy. It is not clear. I need to, well, I haven't even bottled it yet. So that's why I come out here with a glass. I was like, you know, I can't waste any more time with this. I got to get it done. Um, so I, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkaloid to it to clear it. I have bentonite. I have some other things. I just know how to use sparkaloid right now. So that's probably what I'm going to use. I know all the other things work well too. Oh my God. I feel like 
this camera I have like at an upward angle and I swear I don't have a double chin, but it looks like I do. What does this smell like? It smells like lavender. <laughs> what do you know? I think I do get the rum barrel chips. I let them sit for, I think a day too long maybe. Could have been a little bit too long. Don't know, it was strong oakiness when I removed them, but that does tend to be the case where like right when you remove a fruit or an oak or whatever ingredient, it'll taste very strongly of that, but then after a few days, the flavor like calms way down, you know? I don't even know, I think, I, that must be rose hip. There is like a distinct fruit scent. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I look at. I don't know what to say right now. I will tell you this is only two months old though. Two months old total. And it's a little, it's funky. I don't think it's anything I did wrong. I think it's, hang on. I think it's the rose hips. It's such a weird flavor right now. You get hit with it like while the meat is like sitting on your palate. And then after you swallow, it's like bing. Whatever this is, it's an ingredient. It's not something that I, it's not a flaw in my brewing. It's gotta be the rose hips. It's so weird because I didn't like notice them before. I couldn't tell if they were there. I mean, I didn't put in that much rose water. This is weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is weird. I'm definitely gonna have to do like a year tasting on this because uh, it's, it's too weird right now for me to give like a proper evaluation, I think. The sweetness has calmed down. I don't think it's too sweet anymore. I think that part's good. It does have a smoothness to it. It's just that one flavor is like so odd. It has to be the rose hips. It's, it's, that's, that's the only thing I can think is that it's the rose hips. And unfortunately, because I've never used them before, I don't know what they're supposed to taste like. What is this taste like? What is, what is this? Why is this? Who is this? It might be good. <laughs> the lavender's not overpowering anymore. It's there, it's blended with the weird, but it could just be that because this is two months old, it's just not old enough to assess properly. If there's vanilla, it's very subtle. Definitely lavender, rose. I think there could be more vanilla in it. <laughs> could be more vanilla, which was part of why I wanted to add some oak was because oak can add like a vanilla in flavor. I think I, I think it needs to sit for a year. So uh, probably around this time next year, guys, <laughs> you'll get, you'll get the official, is this good answer? Cause right now it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I'll put on the screen about how strong this meat should be. It doesn't taste super strong. I don't think it's crazy. It's like mid-level, you know? Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that it is so late. Uh, please check out everyone else's videos. Uh, I'll have all their channels linked down below. Uh, thank you so much for supporting me, for being here. I am hoping to be more regular with my videos again now that I don't have to go back and forth from Texas anymore. I made my last trip recently, so thank you so much everyone for sticking around. Thank you for subscribing all my new subscribers. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.